Abigail, can you tell me a bit about what... what it's like now? Being a ghost and all. Of course! I'd be happy to. Hmm, where to begin? I found it to be quite convenient, personally. As I said before, we're not ghosts, per se. Or at least, not in the conventional way. Which is to say, we're not dead. It's more like we're somewhere between life and death. You and I are now fundamentally bound to the forest and to everything else in it. In the forest, everything is connected. <sighs> this is harder than I thought. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Take your time. Everything in the forest is connected. The trees, the grass, the birds, the foxes, everything. And that includes you and I, too. Connected? How? Magic. That makes sense. Madison, it'll be all right, I promise. I know it's a lot to take in, but it'll be okay. I'm here for you. I'm here. Madison, are you okay? Yeah, uh, I'm fine now. Or at least better. Thanks. Are you sure? We don't have to keep going right now. We could save this for another day.
It's fine. Let's just keep going. If I just sit and do nothing, I'm sure I'd feel even worse. If you're sure... Earlier... You said something earlier... about Terra... how... how it wouldn't be possible for Terra to even see me. Correct. But I was able to see you, even before all of this happened. So why couldn't she see me? That was projection. I've had a lot of practice. I'd be happy to teach it to you, too. But it took me decades... Some time to learn. I see. Did you spend much time in the forest when you were alive? I did. However, I never traveled very far. Why do you ask? I was just thinking about how you know your way around so well. It kind of reminds me of the girl I met here in the village, Morgan. I've had plenty of time to see it all. It's simple too, once you know how to do it. As long as you know where you're going, the forest will guide your way there. I'm certain you'll get the hang of it someday. Oh 
what was Eisenfeld like back then? Much the same as it is today, as far as I can tell. Quiet and isolated. We rarely had any visitors. Even news of the outside world, or the rest of the country, was slow to arrive. But I longed for it. For the stories that would occasionally make their way to us. Sometimes friends of my father would head into the city for a few weeks, taking the goods that we had grown and made to trade, and bringing back things we lacked. And they'd return with gifts for all of the children, my sister and I, or the little boy across the road. Gifts and stories about wondrous devices they'd seen, or about the marvelous people they met. When I was alive, I always wished to see it for myself someday. Instead, I had to satisfy myself with books and with other people's stories. I'm sorry, I hadn't really thought about these things in a while. It's okay. I hope they're not painful memories. These ones aren't. What about you? There are so many things that I want to know, but I hardly know where to begin asking. Machines soar overhead day and night, but I've never known what they are. Or watching as Eisenfeld becomes more modern, but not understanding. I want to understand! I'm sorry. Again. That can wait. You're fine. I'm sure I'd feel the same way in your position. After we meet your friend, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Or at least everything I can. I'm not exactly the best storyteller, and I'm not very good at explaining why things work. But if that's still enough... Would you? I'm sure you're wonderful at telling stories. 
I could tell from the way you read to me back at the church. Do you remember? <laughs> like I could forget. That's a day I'll remember for the rest of my life. Is it? Why is that? Well, that was the first day that we spent time together, right? And that's when you showed me your name. I suppose it was. I just didn't realize it was that significant to you. Of course it was. That they changed everything for me. What is this place? We're at the center of the forest now. These trees are the oldest ones here. They're the ancestors of all the rest. All of the life in the forest comes from here.
this is your friend? That's right. This spirit is the guardian of the forest. It helped me save you, just like it saved me long ago. I... I see. Does it have a name? If it does, I don't know it. I just think of it as the forest spirit. Um, I've come to say thank you for intervening and for saving me. Abigail told me that you helped. I don't really know how I can ever repay you. I owe you my life. Or, well, <laughs> whatever's left of it. I don't know what happens now, either. I'm still getting used to all of this. But again, thank you.
So what did you think? I don't really know what I think. I'm part grateful, part terrified, part shocked. When I saw it before, I thought it had to be a monster or something. It just seemed so ferocious and huge that I assumed it was evil. So seeing it like that is... weird. It's certainly intimidating at first. When we first met, I was also rather fearful, but I quickly realized how kind and gentle it was, at least towards me. Why wasn't it enormous this time? It can make itself larger or smaller at will. The night that you saw it, it must have had a reason. And you're able to talk to it? And understand it? Not quite. I speak to it and it understands me, but it doesn't have any words or language. Some of its mannerisms I've picked up over time. We've had quite a long time to get to know each other, after all. Right. Ready to go back to the church? Unless you'd rather stay here, in the forest... I imagine you'd be more comfortable with walls and a roof around you for now, though. Yeah, I would be. Let's go back.